What's up, everybody? The Inquisitive Mamba here, back with another podcast. I got my boy Billy uh, joining the show again uh, today. We just had a great show last night. Uh, Billy, thanks for coming on again. Of course, bro. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure, buddy. Always a pleasure. Today is the draft. It's Christmas for you. It's like a holiday for yes, us. Sir. It's a holiday for Giants and Patriots fans and all the teams that are uh, in the top 15 or, as you would say, the top five. But the first thing I want to get off started today will be who will be the first non-drafted quarterback tonight? You got Kyle Pitts, Panay Sewell, Jamar Chase. Go quick. You got five seconds. Uh, it's going to be uh, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, exactly. It'll be Kyle Pitts to Atlanta. I think he's. I think he's going the Falcons as well. I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, star quarterback Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys says Dak expects that some them to draft somebody defensively. He said, "I I don't see why we wouldn't draft defensively. I think Sertain is the lock there. I think it makes the most sense." Jerry Jones uh, got Ezekiel Elliott a couple years ago. I think he's going to fall back and go defensive this time and, and get his star boy there, Patrick Sertain the second. Um, I just think it makes the most sense. What do you think? I think they have to. They don't really have a choice. Their secondary is in tatters after last season. A lot of players left. Their whole defense is a mess. And they Absolutely. need to start getting some better players in the back end. But uh, now that uh, Sertain could be the pick, they um, they lost Byron Jones. Uh, this would be his second season. He's been gone. I think they make a big splash. I think defense makes the most sense for them. I don't think they really need anything on offense. Um, I just no. see d uh, defense for them makes the most sense. Um, Joe Burrow's set to be the start, uh, set to be back for week one. Uh, hoping they'll have Panay Sewell or his buddy uh, from LSU, Jamar Chase. I think the safe pick would go uh, offensive tackle. You showed me a clip last year, and you were like, "That I think that's the reason why Burrow got hurt." I think it was uh, I forgot Bobby Hart. Bobby Hart, yeah, your your guy from garbage years ago. Yep. But he's he, oh he's yeah, a dumpster fire of a player. Swamp two four seven. My my uh, my area, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, projects uh, Florida will have eight NFL draft picks this year. First of all, if we can go with Pitts, Tony, uh, Trask, Stone, Forsyth, uh, there's four right there. Maybe Brett Heggie, that's five. Um, uh, and maybe there's a couple other guys that uh, people aren't really thinking of. But, hey, the, uh, the, the ones to look out for tonight are um, Kadarius Tony. He could go late first. We know Kyle Pitts is going to go top five. And then Trask could uh, go early second, um, maybe even uh, maybe late first. Who knows if, if, if the quarterback's uh, – all get taken off the board. Who knows? But your Giants are most likely to take uh, Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith. I want you to weigh in on that. Um, I think uh, over the past years, the Giants have given a lot of their picks just, just for the heck of it. But you're the big Giants guy. Tell us uh, what you think, uh, if they're going to take them or are they just um, trying to trick us? You know, last year we had the – who had the Giants picking? Andrew Thomas at four. Nobody. Right. I mean – Picking Jalen Waddle and Devonta Smith really opens up the offense. You have Kenny Galladay going over the top. You'd have Smith or Waddle shooting through the middle. Absolutely. Shepard already there in the slot, and you have a healthy Saquon. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't hate it, but I don't love it because it would really depend on the board. Like, if Slater is there or Parsons is there, I want them badly. But if right. they're not, I'd be happy to go with Waddle or Devonta Smith without a second thought. Absolutely. No, and the, and the thing that uh, what concerns me the most about Devonta Smith is his health. Uh, his body. Uh, Shannon Sharp had him on his show, uh, I think yesterday, the day before, and he said, you know, I'm, this is the type of player I am. I don't think, you know, I'm going to be uh, gaining any weight anytime soon if, if he can bulk up or not. But, you know, there's players, uh, there's ath there's athletes like Kevin Durant. I mean, he's an exception. You know, he's set basically seven feet tall and, you know, he's not a guy that can gain weight, but he'll put, he'll get buckets on you. Devontae Smith is that type of player where he'll fly right by, you know, but it's all about his durability because the NFL is a lot different than the NBA. I'm not comparing the two, but you know, the body, the body types are not necessarily similar, but also at the same time, they are two, you know, great athletes. The Giants um, are looking to take Waddle or Smith. Stay tuned for that tonight. Who knows? They may, uh, they may stay in 11. They may trade up with uh, Mr. Belichick himself, but staying in your division, Philly is looking to trade up as well. We talked about that in the pre-show. I think that makes the most sense for the, for the Eagles. Um, they're obviously competing with the Giants and the Cowboys and WFT, but um I think it makes the most sense for them just because they're looking for that desperate receiver. Um, they don't really have, a, they don't really have an outside uh, outside threat. I don't know where Alshon Jeffrey's been. Um, Travis Fulgham, He's I gone. guess uh, Alshon Jeffrey's gone. You got Travis Fulgham, you got um, JJ Arcega Whiteside, um, and then some guys from, uh, from the steak shop over there in Philly. Well, you got Jalen Rager from last year too. Jalen Rager from TCU, but he's got to stay healthy. He's another guy. But, hey, I mean, you know, maybe they can go to the uh, Rocky set and get some guys from uh, Philly to see if anybody <laughs> can play receiver. 
John Lynch and Shanahan are the only guys that know the pick. I think that's super sketchy. Um, the Athletic reported this morning that those are the only two guys that know the pick. Um, nobody in the organization besides them knows the pick. What do you think about that? I think that's kind of weird. You know, I mean, you would think that I, I just I feel like they're playing us. I don't think it's Mac Jones and my heart. I don't think it is. What do you think? You know, at the end of the day, I really think we all know it should be Justin Fields. He's right. He, he is the second best quarterback in this class. Well, we don't, mm -hmm. we don't worry about the jets because they're irrelevant. Right. At the end of the day, Justin Fields is the, the second best quarterback in this draft. And Absolutely. with Lynch and Shanahan being the only two people that know they're really staking, they've built a good roster there, but they mm -hmm. are staking their careers in San Absolutely. Francisco on this pick. Absolutely. No, and it's it's. I'm glad you weighed in on that, but I want to uh, I want to quickly uh, give about ten more seconds about this. I just think it's weird that um, they're just so desperate for that quarterback. But like I brought up last night, it's all about that contract situation with Jimmy G. If they want to dump him off next year and let that rookie sit, or or they want to throw the rookie into the fire and they want to say screw you, Jimmy G. You're just not the guy. I mean, you brought us to a Super Bowl, you know, but. I, I, we just don't think you're that guy. Moving on, the Patriots are fine on waiting Jimmy G. We're sticking with Jimmy G for a little bit longer. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, I think the Patriots, uh, they could make a splash today for Jimmy G. Or they could uh, say, you know, we're done with Jimmy G. We had you. Um, you can go elsewhere. But I don't know. I think uh, I think it's interesting to, uh, to hear that one as that name comes up a lot today and uh, further into the night before the draft officially kicks off in Cleveland. Um, here are some biggest first-round um, – Guys that have like basically been busts from the past 10 years. First off, I'm starting off with James Carpenter in 11. 2012 was Bruce Irvin. EJ Manuel in 13 with the Bills. Juwan James with the Dolphins in 14. Or Eric Flowers, one of your guys from 15. Joshua Garnett, never even heard of the guy, 2016. 2017, Adoree Jackson, your guy now. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, 2018 Steelers guy. Uh, LJ Collier, 2019. And then uh, Damon Arnett from the Raiders who just got drafted last year. Some notable names because not every, not every first round pick everybody knows is going to pan out. I mean, it's just not exactly. how that works. You know, I mean, to the top five guys are usually, are usually secured. Those guys usually become, you know, the star set of guys in the NFL, anyone outside of really the top 10, it's, it's, you know, hit or, hit or miss. I mean, you could win the lotto and that guy could be good or, you know, it could be a third round pick or a fourth round pick. I mean, Tom Brady's obviously the perfect example of, you know, six yeah. round, 199 pick, you know, um, Antonio <laughs> Brown's another guy. Michael Thomas was a second round guy. Jarvis Landry was another late guy. Not every guy is going to be, you know, hit off the board right away. And he's going to be great. I mean, there's plenty of guys, you know, absolutely. But uh, like I said, the Pats and the Bears are uh, convincing for uh, pick seven to ten to trade up for a QB. You know, it'd be interesting to see what Belichick will do because you got Gilmore, uh, for some trade bait, you got you got Gilmore. I don't think you really have much else because Dante Hightower is too old. I mean, I really think Gilmore yeah. is the only guy that um, they would think about uh, think about trading. I guess. I mean, somebody that maybe the Bears want to take on that contract. I don't know. Some team might might want that contract. I couldn't tell you. Um, but it's got to be um, it's got to be that and like two uh, two firsts or something. But yeah, going to be a hefty haul for a guy like Fields or Lance, but Belichick's got something up his sleeve. I want to weigh on in this mock draft real quick from Bleach Report. This was their mock from this morning. Lawrence obviously yep. at one. Jags fans are waiting for him at the wedding and the honeymoon, and they're they're hanging out <laughs> over there. Zach Wilson, he's uh, probably going to go to the Jets. That's obvious. Lance, I guess they have at three. Pitts at four. Okay. Chase at five. Swell at six. Seven Slater. Eight Vera Tucker. Nine. Um, or excuse me, Slater at eight and nine, Vera Tucker and 10, Mac Jones. Those are the top 10 guys they have. Sorry, uh, Sertain was 10th, Mac Jones was nine, uh, Vera okay. Tucker was eight, and then Slater was seven. Makes sense. But, um, you know, I don't really know a lot about Vera Tucker. Um, I know he's a USC guy. Um, I, I know about Suell a little bit from you. Uh, he's a really, really yeah. big guy. I'm not really, I don't, know about his, I don't know about his footwork, you know, that much. I think he could slide right in. I mean, obviously he's huge, you know. Yeah, but, he can um, slide right in and start. My my two favorite guys from uh, well I'm not I'm gonna disclude Lawrence because he's just kind of you know gonna go first but my two favorite yeah. guys from this lit or three favorite guys I'm gonna go uh, Pitts because he's my guy from Florida uh, Jamar Chase because I've seen him play many many games and then third I'm gonna go okay. Certain he just seems like a corner that could just slide in right away super physical Absolutely. great great pro day uh, great combine you know I I just think he could uh, easily slide in right away. Um, Staying with the draft for about 30 more seconds. The Saints are trying to move up to the top 10. What do you think about that? Good luck. They'd have to move into the – they'd have to move in – they're picking, what, 28th or something like that? They'd have to move into the teams first at a minimum Yeah, they, and they then try have, to get into the top 10. 
Yeah, they'd have to uh, they'd have to move in uh, into the teens, like you said, and then move into the top ten. I guess Michael Thomas is your guy that I guess you would bait, or maybe in a line. I don't know. I mean, Miami is that trade partner if they want to try to pull something off. Miami is that that. trade partner, but Miami also traded up into uh, traded back into that pick, so I don't see Miami doing anything with that. I I just don't don't see they want Chase probably. And and don't don't forget Miami tried uh, Miami and the Saints tried something with Drew Brees and that never felt that never went through. So I don't That's see true. them I don't see them being trade partners. I just don't see that uh, in yeah. the works. But the Cardinals, Raiders, and Browns they want uh, Caleb Fairley, a guy you're pretty familiar yeah. with. He tested positive for COVID, so he won't be at the draft. But yeah. um, he could be another solid guy. Um, I think he's a late first, maybe early second. I don't see him going past the second, honestly. I mean, yeah. he could, even with his injuries, he won't go no, past the second. I don't think. I don't think he'll go past. Um, Devontae Smith is down for a Jalen Hurts reunion. I think that. I mean, that could make a lot of sense if the Eagles do end up trading up uh, mm-hmm. into that sixth spot. Yeah, if they were to take that sixth spot, but I don't think the Bengals are gonna. Bengals are gonna want that. But who knows? I mean, a lot of GMs are risky on draft day. Anything oh, yeah. could happen, you know. Um, but. Uh, the Patriots and Carolina are the favorites to land fields. They're both plus 300. I mean, that's pretty good odds. If you ask me, um, you know, I think, I think it's an interesting one because fields uh, is a, is a buddy of Cam Newton's. And it'd be interesting to see that QB room. Maybe Fields sits for a year and he learns under uh, learns under him, but I got something for you guys right here. This guy wore number <laughs> one and Cam Newton wears number one. So there'd be a lot of QB uh, number controversy there because fields has worn number one, his whole entire playing career. And Cam Newton has won, uh, has worn number one as well. So you got two egos going at it there. I mean, I think a guy like Fields could learn from a guy like Cam Newton because, you know, some guy, some guys say uh, Fields is not quite ready yet. You know, what do you think about that? I mean, I with any quarterback outside of like your Trevor Lawrence, there's yeah, really what's the reason to start him right away? You throw him into the fire and you get a Dwayne Haskins sort of guy that comes out and they're rushed and they don't know what's Absolutely. going on. It's Absolutely, risky. It's uh, it's interesting because. Anyone out, anyone outside of Lawrence, you know, they, they could be good. You know, we don't we don't really know a lot about Zach Wilson. We, I mean, we, we've seen minimal tape from him. We've seen yeah. minimal tape from Trey Lance. He's only played two games his last what two years or something like that because he only played. Yeah, one they game. had their season cut short this year. Yeah, he played one game. So I mean, okay, you get pro day stuff, but I mean, game footage is totally different than throwing than, than you and I throwing the ball in the backyard or them throwing that pro day. Yeah. It's totally, totally different. Going away from the NFL draft, we hope you enjoyed that segment. Uh, it is tonight at 8 o'clock on ESPN, ABC. You got them all, uh, NFL Network. Uh, oh, yeah. There'll be people streaming them. We might be streaming the draft live as well on Twitch later. Uh, moving on to the NBA, I called it. I told you guys, <clears throat> no, Chris Paul is not the MVP yet, but he was getting chance from his teammates, from his fans, and the Suns make their first playoff appearance since 2010. And uh, if you guys remember, 2010, that was Amari Stoudemire and Steve Nass. That was the last time they made the playoffs with Mike D'Antoni, Sean Marion, all those guys. Billy's not really an NBA guy, but I'm giving him some insight right now. Tonight's games, you got, you got Mavs, Pistons, Dallas is minus 8.5. You got the Nets, Pacers, Nets are minus 8.5. Bucks, Rockets, Mil- uh, Bucks, Rockets, Milwaukee is minus 12.5. T Wolves dubs Golden State's minus three and a half. The Pelicans, OKC, New Orleans is minus nine and a half. And the Nuggets, Raptors, Denver's minus three. Um, I think the Mavs Pistons won. I think that's fair. I would take that minus eight and a half spread. And that's Pacers. Nets eight minus eight and a half. I would take that as long as there's no barring injuries. If Katie and Kyrie are playing, who knows if Kyrie will hang out, load manage, and sit on the bench with his walking cane. Who knows? Bucks, <laughs> Bucks Rockets, Milwaukee minus 12 and a half. I've said so many times on this show that when you play the Rockets, it's like playing an LA fitness team. I mean, I could get some guys from 24 Hour Fitness or the guys at the courts over here, and we can put them on the Rockets. It'd be the same freaking thing. But T Wolves dubs. You got Golden State's minus three and a half. I think that's a fair one. But the the Wolves play everyone good. They're they have nothing to lose. Um, they got Clown Boy over there, Anthony Edwards. He puts up some uh, puts up some numbers. But that's that could be an e- that could be an easy one. Steph could go off for 40. Who knows? I mean, he could have 10 threes. I mean, dude, the dude shoots from the parking lot anywhere with his eyes closed. Uh, Pelicans Thunder uh, New Orleans is minus nine and a half. I think that's fair. Pelicans have been uh, been a little hot as of lately, but they can't finish games. They got Stan Van Gundy's a dumpster fire of a coach. I don't understand him, but that team just can't finish games. They're very, 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 very talented. Lonzo had 16 last night. Ingram finished with 28. Um, Nuggets Raptors is my last one. Denver's minus three. Um, I like Denver more min- more than minus three. Um, Michael Porter had 28 last night, and Jokic I ended, ended up with like 34. He's probably the MVP. Um, I think they'll give it to him. I don't see why not. He would be the first uh, big man to win an MVP since Shaq. So 
that's what you have for the NBA. But Billy, there's one more thing that I need you to roll for the people listening and watching this podcast. Roll sure. the clip. Roll it. Good. Bring it up. Bring it up. Put it on the camera. Put it on the camera. Put it. There it is. Wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, Bradley Beal gets the ball, passes it up, passes it up. Rui Hachimura dunks on Anthony Davis. Oh, my goodness. All right, get that away from me. Anthony Davis was on the floor. I don't even know what happened, but, hey, hats off to Rui Hachimura on, uh, on that posterized dunk. That's it for us today. Billy, give yourself a round of applause. We're, uh, we're heading off. Yes, we're sir. The Inquisitive Mamba is on Spotify. It is on Anchor. It is on Google Podcasts. It will be on Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts uh, very soon. I got a podcast to catch at 430. I got to go to the gym. I got to get my day started here, but make sure to, uh, make sure to tune in. I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, Billy, thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, dude, thanks for having me. Draft day, baby. We will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Draft day. We're out.